guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna to be working on a couple of different things. We're gonna start off with some allium transplanting. When we're done with that, we're gonna head down to the garden center because they just unloaded an entire semi of brand new plants this morning. I'm so excited. Point of reference, you can see the pond right in front of us. If we rotate to the right, there's the Hartley. For those of you who've been watching our videos for a while, you probably remember what this space used to look like. There used to be you know, pretty tall fence, it was, it was all lawn. There was a boxwood formation uh, with a fountain in the middle. I almost can't picture it. Isn't that wild? I mean, I was so reluctant to get rid of the boxwood formation back here because I liked the formality of it, but the space back here was largely unused. We never came back here ever, unless I needed to do some flower bed maintenance. It was just this unused space and we have used this spot in the garden where the pond was put in more than I think we've used any other space in our entire yard. We come out here all the time. Uh, anyway, we cleared everything out in here, including the boxwoods, and it was after the alliums were done. So I kind of forgot they were there. And last spring, I thought, what is pushing through the soil? Like we have no water out there. Nothing's been watered all year. Um, and yeah. Lo and behold, it was all the alliums that I had planted in here. Uh, so initially when we moved in, the boxwood formation was just full of nepeta, which was gorgeous. But I wanted something that grew up a little bit taller so we could see it uh, blooming at least for a portion of the year. So I got in there and planted some Globemaster and Ambassador alliums and they're beautiful and they are thriving. So we're just gonna dig them up and let them thrive somewhere else. This is not the ideal time to transplant bulbs. Usually you want to do that after they're done blooming, after they've soaked in their energy uh, from the sun and their leaves have started to die back. That's the best time to dig them up and move them. But I wanna move them now because otherwise they're just gonna sit here and not get water again. And I don't know how long they can handle that. Bethany calls us the ghosts of boxwood past. <laughs> which is a very, very apt name. But you can see they're kind of coming up in a moon sort of shape. And then these that were in the other boxwood formation, they, these got kind of messed up because we had big machines in here to put the pond in. Can you see all the snowdrops? Look at all of these. I hope they naturalized. We kind of planted them far apart from one another, but we we're really enjoying them. Anyway, the only ones over here are right in this section, sort of underneath where the spruce is. So this chore is pretty simple. We just dig them up and then go out and dig new holes and pop them in. Shouldn't be too hard, I hope. It's been a little bit of a breezy day today, but tomorrow it's supposed to be super bad. Really, really windy. Okay, let's test this ground out. Hopefully it's soft. Okay, moment of truth. Oh yeah, look at that, perfect. Boy, if they all come out this easily, I'm gonna be super happy, but look at this. So we had one allium bulb planted here. Now it looks like we've got three. Okay, let's try this one. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, dang. It's gonna be that times a whole bunch. Let's get after it.
Well, here they are. That didn't take too long at all. And you can definitely tell a difference between variety here. I'm guessing these are the ambassadors because these get quite a bit bigger than the Globemasters. And I did plant those after, so it would make sense that I have more of those than these. I'm guessing these are the Globemasters. Well, we'll see. And here's our cleaned up space. It's looking a lot better. Those alliums, it just didn't make sense to have them come up right out in the middle of, of this, especially because we have no water here. Everything is on drip irrigation and has like individual emitters run to them. So it's very efficient watering out here. And we are gonna be developing this section right here, but it's not gonna be until late in the season. So I have no reason to really run any water and I don't really want to run water just for the random arc of alliums. So now we can enjoy them somewhere else out in the garden. I actually have no idea where we're gonna put these, but we're gonna go find a spot. Up here in the Persephone garden, I did plant Globemaster alliums up here, maybe fall before last. And it seems like in this space, because we had tulips in here, this side always performs better. And it's probably because it gets a lot more sun. You can see this is the north side of the boxwoods. And while I can see some of the alliums coming up in here. I think we've got a couple of holes. So where it looks like there's gaps, I'm gonna pop some of our globe masters in here. I did bring out my three inch auger and some flower tone will pop in the holes. Well, that worked out perfectly. I used every last globe master we just dug out to fill in all of the gaps in this space. So hopefully we have more of a balanced full display in this area. That's so perfect. I love it when things work out like that. Ooh, look at all the geese. Okay, so now we have all the ambassadors to plant. And if you get in here close, you can kind of see how deep I'm planting them right about up to where the bouquet of leaves start. And I'm gonna separate these two. So we end up with something like this in the end. So I'm digging my holes about six inches or so deep, just like if I was planting them initially. These are nice size bulbs too. I think this spot would be perfect. We recently cleaned this little corner out and I don't have much for spring interest other than a few little daffodils popping through right there. So if we just scatter those alliums around in here, I think it'd be so pretty. Also, just as a little neighbor update, they've just started to build a house right here in the corner lot, which for a while, it'll probably seem like the house is enormous. I'm guessing it's gonna be a one story. That's what all these houses are. In fact, we knew this area was gonna be developed when we initially bought our house. But every time one goes up, it always seems so massive. And then it just starts to, I think you just get used to it and it starts just to blend in. Like I hardly even notice the houses anymore. Plus we like our neighbors and that makes a huge difference. Okay, let's go for it. Here 
here's a little look before we get them in the ground. I mean, you'll be able to see the leaves once we get them planted, but this way you can kind of see how I dug all the holes. And I tried to put them around in areas where I know there's drip running to different perennials. So I shouldn't have to run any supplemental irrigation to any of these. And I like to do them in random groups, like a one, two, there might be seven, eight, three right here, just randomly dotted throughout this flower bed. But I think the thing that'll look really pretty is that they start here and they kind of go in a little bit of an arc all the way around to that spruce tree. Okay, we just need to get them in the ground now. They're all tucked into their new home and I cannot wait to see a sea of purple in here, late spring. I focused mainly on pink and purple blooms with just a few limelight hydrangeas. So I think they're just gonna be the perfect fit for this corner. Okay, let's head down to the garden center. Here we are. Looks like I'm not the only one who is excited about the new load. Oh, look at these slender drop those are kind of neat aren't they wouldn't those look cool with christmas lights <laughs> oh there's one of the carts of hellebores okay so they've had a load of fruit trees and oh my goodness look at all the palace over here and and shade trees oh my goodness hey, <laughs> hey there. how many pieces showed up this morning 1600 1600 yeah. oh my gosh did you bring your pickup yes i did <laughs> <laughs> not a trailer though might have to trailer. borrow a trailer. <laughs> We've got a couple pickups. Oh my goodness. So tons of evergreens, it looks like. And yep, a bunch of shrubs, roses. They're tucked in everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere where we could fit a pallet. Oh my goodness. We're potting roses right now. Oh, they are. So they just got this trek done and then they're brought onto roses. Oh my gosh. We'll have to go take a look at that as well. But I'm thinking we need to start right at the very front of all the pallets and kind of work our way back. Now, none of the deciduous stuff have leaves yet. So it doesn't look as like prime or peak as they could or will. What is this? Oh, that's an ivory silk. Yeah. Lilac, that's yeah. beautiful, yes. Anyway, I think we should start at the front and kind of work our way back. Okay, while we were back there, just now mom and I chatting, another load of roses showed up. More roses? More roses? Nice! In here? Oh, you guys. Oh, look at this. This is what they've been working on. There's tree roses, bare root roses. They get soaked for a little while and then potted up. Oh, this is pretty. Pop art, look at that. Ooh, that is cool. Yeah. The Pope John Paul II. These are amazing. Oh, there's more tags. This is actually a really pretty one. It, it's like, it's really pretty and it smells so good. Have you got enough going on to keep you busy around here? <laughs> you know what, it's fun. It is. Yeah, yeah. it's fun. Okay, let's take a look at what we came for. So first of all, all of these fruit trees and there's so many of them. There's apples and tons of varieties, cherries, and then peaches, nectarines, pears, plums, and then there's usually some uh, like apriums and pluots, which are across, uh, apricot plum crosses the aprium, and then the plum apricot crosses the pluot. And then right here, a bunch of trees, and we'll come back, you guys, when everything has leaves. It's a little more interesting when you can see what color and shape their leaves are or what their blooms look like, but I always love seeing all of these evergreens. They're just so gorgeous, like the eastern white pine. It's so fluffy and soft. 
Scotch pine always kind of has a little bit of a like frazzled wild look. There's some Black Hill spruce. Oh, a little lollipop blue spruce. Oh, there's a weeping blue spruce too. Oh, and then there's some green giant arborvitas and emerald greens. Ooh, there's a whole bunch of North Poles. Ooh, I better tell Aaron. He'll be excited about that. I'm seeing some really fun lollipops, except for I can't really walk through here <laughs> at the moment. What are those? The tag needs to stop blowing around. It's going too fast. Some sort of crab apple. Uh, some larger green giants in here. Ooh, this is neat. The blue arrow juniper. And then these are Spartans. More pines. Yeah, really good assortment of evergreens. So this is the weeping blue. It's called the blues. Grow six by five. Party to zone three. These are just so cute. How big do these get? Four by four. And these are really interesting. The Oregon green Austrian pine. I've got a couple of these and mine are way thicker. These are much more almost like bonsai looking. I really like the structure of them. There's some things that haven't even been untied yet. Is this another of the blues? Yes, yeah, isn't that the most beautiful structure? I love that so much. And then there's the, I don't know how to say it, fastigiata, fastigiate, uh, 25 by six. A really narrow but tall blue spruce. And then back in here, there's just tons of things. You'll find viburnums, elderberries, privets, uh, buckthorns, Oh, that's pretty autumn jazz viburnum. There's some wygellas in here. These are the Maimone sunset. That's really beautiful. Oh, there's some lemon drift roses in red and pink drift. There's nine barks, the summer wine, the double blue. Oh, I love this one, the blue kazoo. We've got one on the west side and I just love the color of its leaves. Two to three feet tall and wide, really pretty white blooms. Oh, and there's a Hancock coral berry. And back in here, there's dogwoods. This is the prairie pink right here. Eastern red buds. Ooh, multi-trunk Eastern red buds. Love those. Forest pansy in multi-trunk form. More witch hazels. There's Helena and Arnold Promise. Oh, so pretty. And Diane. So much to see. Magnolia. Oh, and then there's some beautiful hibiscus right here. Or Rosa Sharon hibiscus. Lavender chiffon. Oh, I saw another one. Yeah, this one. A Fiji. Oh, and one of my favorites, the blue chiffon. So gorgeous. And these racks are starting to fill up with things, new trees. How fun. Oh, right over here, there's some ornamental cherries. Oh, royal, oh my goodness, royal burgundy cherry. Look at that, 20 by 15. There's the first blush flowering cherry, 25 by 12 with that orange fall color. Oh my goodness. Oh, there's, you want to miss over here. This is the gold splash variety. There's Arctic fire, yellow dogwood, sesters, dwarf, blue spruce. These get like six by four, right? No, 11 by five. <laughs> I was way off. The Julia Jane boxwood. These are really pretty. They grow about four by four, but I like how deep green they are. Oh, look at all of these. Oh my goodness. Talpa, tulip trees, service berries. Yeah, see, this is what the Autumn Brilliant Service Berry does in the fall. They're just electric. There's choke cherries, the Little Dipper, Katoni Aster. I planted one of these right at the tippy top of our waterfall behind our pond. I hope it kind of hugs the rocks and comes down a bit. Yeah, just look at this. <laughs> look at how much stuff is in this space. It goes all the way back. A whole bunch of sprinter boxwoods right there. Ginkgo trees. What are these? Firelight hydrangeas. Bobo hydrangeas, just oh my word. Yeah, we need to make it back here when things have had a chance to leaf out a bit. Just shrubs everywhere, I love it. And in the greenhouse here, they've already started to load it up with roses that they have finished potting. So those usually stay in here for a couple of weeks before they go out into the nursery, out in the, you know, exposed. But there's a few varieties I'm already seeing that are winners. All Dressed Up is one of my favorite landscape varieties. It's a grandiflora, um, but ours just are glossy green leaves, beautiful blooms all season long. I'm also seeing a couple that have been put in our rose garden, like Fun in the Sun. This is a really beautiful variety. There's Julia Child tree roses. Elizabeth Taylor. Ooh, there's Peace Rose. Those are always really popular. Marilyn Monroe. Miss Congeniality. Blue Girl. Chantilly Cream. I love that. Anyway, guys, I think that is going to be it for today because the breeze is picking up and it is chilly <laughs> out there. 
I'm kind of ready to be done and out of the weather for the afternoon. But you can see that the garden center is just loading up and they just have more and more loads coming every single week to where this place will just be, it'll be hard to walk around because there'll be so many beautiful things to see. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.